Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tommy Rat's New York Hardcore Stories. Let me get these off my ears so I can at least hear myself speak while an echo. And so the, these headphones try not to pick up any other sounds in the room, if that's a, <laughs> if that actually works. All right, but anyway, here I am with another weekly installment. Uh, th this will probably be the last one until until after Christmas. Maybe uh, maybe I might do one before New Year's, or I might wait till after New Year's. Hold on a second, I just want to fix something here. All right, here we go. Here we go. That's much better. Okay. Yeah, I try to do live. I, I don't know. There's been something wrong with this. Uh, with my uh, Streamlab software. I'm just uh, trying to do live, but for some reason it's not working the way it should be. You know, because I want to do the lives. I want to do the lives this way. You know, you can hold my feet to the fire, so I don't have to be worried about nobody has to worry about me doing outtakes or anything. But anyway, I just figured I record it, so they'll be under the same principle. All right, all right. So this episode is about. It's titled "Crucial Cruise: The New York Hardcore to Baltimore, September 18, 1982." Basically, okay. But first of all, I want everybody who's not a subscriber that's watching this now to subscribe, to like, comment, and share this show and check out the other pre previous episodes we did last week we did one about an AF review AF played the brass mug in Tampa I did a review on that show and I want to thank the new subscribers who have joined us thank you very much much appreciated well news I want all you heads out there who haven't subscribed to subscribe I want to try to get get to a thousand Get to the thousand and watch the shit out of these videos. Watch the shit out of them. Watch them over if you have to. But anyway. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, on September 18th, there was a show that was booked in Baltimore, Maryland at, at this club called Terminal 406. Okay. Agnostic Front just just started, and at the time, Robbie Cripcrash left left the band to join the Sadistic Exploits. Uh, but then he ended up. But then they broke up, and they broke up, and and uh, you know, and he was going to, and he and he was going to join Cause for Alarm. Now Ray Bees, who's been hanging around with Vinny and the and the rest of AF. He got he joined the band as their drummer. He joined up. Yeah, Rabies was the second drummer for AF. Now at the time it was a completely different band, mind you. A completely different band where you had John Watson singing and Diego playing bass. It was a completely different band from what you will what you are used to seeing today. As uh, as opposed to what, as opposed to what they were doing back then, but they were just starting out. So come some slack. So a massive road trip where a lot of people from the hardcore scene was traveling was going to travel down to uh, down to Baltimore, Maryland for this show. On the same day, the Bad Brains was opening up for Discharge at the Reggae Lounge, but. What was so unique about this show, Minor Threat was on the bill. People want to go down there and see Minor Threat play. And the bill and the bill was uh, Minor Threat, MDC, uh, The Bollocks, Scream, and SSD Control. Now, basically, you know, we were all, like, a lot of us that didn't drive were looking for rides down there. We're looking for rides. So, so Uncle Al, for you know, he got he got me, 
you know, he, I, I think that's like the first time I met him. That was probably the first time I met him. And he got hooked up with this guy, Paul, from the Cavity Creeps. You know, he would later play in the Cavity Creeps. He wasn't playing, a, he wasn't playing with them, playing guitar with them yet. And, and he had this uh, pickup truck. It was like, it was on a, it was a, it was like a Ranger, like a Ranger pickup truck and it was stick shift. So he offered to take us down there. Like, do okay, there were two girls that came, two girls also came with us. Uh, it was Fee, Fee and Marta. They came with us too. And Willie Nowedge. So only thing is, Paul had, Paul had two seats vacant in the front. And so, and, but he was willing to see, but he was willing to let us ride in the back, in the bed, in the bed of the truck, in the bed of the pickup truck, with a top over the passengers. So the girls got in the front. The girls, uh, you know, got in the front seat with him, and me, Alan, Willie were in the were in the back. So this was like a huge, uh, you know, you know, huge thing that we risked our lives over just to get to the show. A very huge risk we took. Thankfully, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nobody got pulled over or anything like that. So it was all. So it was a fun. It was a fun. It was a fun moment. Back then, you know, I back then I would just go. I would just go to these shows and like, I wouldn't tell my. I wouldn't. I would just go and not even wait for permission. From my parents, I just you know tell them, yeah, I'm gonna be staying over at this guy's house. Be staying over at this guy's house. But we were animals back then, you know. We would just uh, you know get home like, like, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, whatever, you know. <laughs> we back then we just didn't, didn't give a shit about the about those kind of consequences. Now the now the weekend before I think it was the day before or I mean, I'm not sure exactly how far apart this was. You know we had the BYO tour coming into town, and they played at two plus two. Now now this had happened with um, Mike with Mike Ness, throwing, from Social Distortion. Like uh, I don't know he got. I don't know, something happened where, you know, we was drunk and then like, uh, and then he had him throwing a bottle, randomly throwing a bottle and it hit Vinny Stigma in the leg. Uh, well, a lot of people, a lot of people ran after, ran after him for that, but they were there that day. But I think, uh, I think that blew over very quickly from what I understand, because he, Cause he was at the, they were at the show. They were the guys from Youth Brigade. That social distortion were at the the show at Terminal Four Four O Six. So basically, we go down there. You know, uh, it's a lot of people say like, "Oh, the DC, the DC people hate New York." But you know what? We didn't give a fuck. We didn't give a shit. As far as I was concerned, I had no beef with nobody over there. I had no beef, and there was no beef whatsoever. So we get down there. I see rabies, rabies. Shit, you know. Shaved everything off his face. Shaved all his shaved his eyebrows off. He was so uh, enamored with the skin and mentality that he had to he had to have he did not have to have, he did not want no hair on his body. <laughs> he went as far as shaving his eyebrows off. So that was like the first time. That was the first time you know I saw we we saw saw that he did that. We saw that. Cause he was down there before everybody. He he, he went down there, I think uh, a day before. So it was like hanging out, like what, like some of his friends from uh, Virginia were coming up for that show. It's like those are friends that he met when he was in the military. They knew. They knew back then. They knew back then. Now, from what Ray was telling me, that you know they. Before the show started, you know the promoter. The promoter had a meeting with the with the band, all the band members, making sure like there was no beef with nobody or anything. Everybody was to be friends, 
and basically the DC people were happy that a New York band was finally coming down. For some odd reason, there weren't many coming at that time. But I think AF was like, mm. AF was one of the few bands that broke that barrier to come down, to come down there, aside from the mob. Now I rem now, I remember the I remember the show. I remember the show was like looked like it was like in some kind of a stable. That's what it looked like from the from the back room where it had all these uh, uh, all these windows that were like up near the ceiling. I remember and it was like oh, painted white. I just I have very 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 few memories of this place. Very few memories. And. So so basically AF was the first band that went on and I and I believe Scream Scream went on and they were they were amazing as always and and I think there I think I think there was a there was a fight I think there was a a fight on the dance floor so Scream stopped stopped playing and and the thing was the thing was like was well, like Asshole, stop playing. That you're gonna give a real reason for the cops to come in here, because you know they they are they're a lot of I think a lot of the clubs over there was having a hard time, like you know, where of course law enforcement don't like didn't like us having these type of shows for for some odd reason, and then another band that though. MDC played, MDC played that show. At the time, I, at the time, I yeah, MDC played. Who else? Uh, the Bollocks. They were they were like a local band. Now Minor Threat played, and and this was a and this was a you know this was like their first appearance with uh, Steve Hudson being in as a bass player. First show with him. Another significant event, and and Brian Baker switching over guitar, and they were playing some songs that would be on the Out of Step EP, like Little Friend, No Reason, Sob Story. So got to you know, got to see them play some of those songs. And SSD was supposed to play that show. But for some reason they didn't. But however, Al from SSD was there. Al Burrell was there. I remember seeing him there. And Fate, you know, Alec McKay's Alec McKay, Ian McKay's brothers' band played instead. They always were. They always put on a good show. I always like. I liked Fate. And then, and then there was another band called Insurrection with Chris. From Faith singing a few songs. I think it was a couple of songs they played. And that was pretty much it. And you know, after that we all went we all went back home. So now let me see. Crucial Cruise. Now I'm gonna talk about the word crucial cruise. This was something that Rabies came up with. He came up with this term crucial cruise. Basically it was like any kind of uh, event like he was involved with that uh, you know that he wanted to certify you know as like well, where like a bunch of us would go go somewhere to see them play to see AF play in another another state and he would certify them as crucial cruises i believe he stopped doing i believe he stopped doing that after a while I think after he left AF, because that term was not, you know, was not referred to for a while. He stopped referring to that term. However, anyway, you know, that, you know, that was a fun idea. It was a fun idea. You know, he wanted, you know, he always, uh, you know, he always tried to ha find a way, you know, for everybody to have fun back then. Anyway, that's a, that's about, that's about it for, for this story. Um, so, first of all, I want to go over a few things, go over a few things here. Let 
you know if you want to help out the channel I have a link for Amazon where you could try to you know buy some buy some music and probably buy some buy whatever other shit you from that from that store anyway you know to help out to help out this channel uh, go check out my socials uh, YouTube of course at Tommy rat Instagram Tommy rat Twitter Tommy rat NYC I might even get a Facebook page just for this channel but you know but I have my own personal page up there as well also another way to uh, you could uh, become a pa patreon member and uh, and I'll try to get some exclusive content but you know be honest with you I don't have any up there yet but so that's something you know that's something uh, I'll come across you can become a patreon at the at Tommy rat NYC and also I'm selling you know rejuvenate and hoodies and you can get them at bonfire.com slash store slash Tommy dash rats dash New York NYHC dash stories And then, you know, to donate, to help the channel, you can send money via PayPal. All this information is in the title description, so I don't need to read that off to you. And also, I have auctions on eBay. I mean, not everything on there might be a cup of tea, but whatever I have in my eBay store, I have it for sale. I mean, so whatever, if you can... If you wanna, if you wanna, you know, help out or help out, if there's something you like on there, you know, check it out. Participate in an auction. I mean, I got some stuff I'm selling straight up, you know, straight up, you know, to buy whatever, you know, without without the auction platform, without the auction setting, I should say. And also, also have a, also if you want deals from your favorite retailers, check out Rakuten. You know, you know, you get some money back from Rakuten. So I have a link in the description below. So if you shop online and you get a thing from a new and you're a, and you're involved with Rakuten, you know they will pay you back. They will pay you. They will pay you money just for buying something. I mean, ain't a whole lot, but still. I mean, I get it. I get it. You know, people. I get it. Like people own. Are struggling right now. I get it. So that's so. In closing, so you know, for those who have not subscribed, please subscribe, share this video, like it, comment. Uh, I'm open to all suggestions whatsoever, ideas. You know, I might not get to them today, but eventually. You know, eventually I'll get to them at some point. So I might not be, uh, I might not be back. I might be back to one more episode before New Year's. If not, I'll see you next year. But we'll see. All right, everybody. Peace out.